If the, if the states would have just let uh, the Indian bingo alone, maybe puts, uh, maybe get the tribes to have some agreements that there won't be cheating and, and there won't be violence, something like that. Of course, the violence would be covered by criminal law. If they just would have let it alone, it wouldn't have blossomed up as a big issue. But this state's rights, we have the power. You're sovereign. No, we're sovereign. We're in control. This just led to a case that ended up in the United States Supreme Court and then Congress passing a law with so many loopholes for greater Indian gaming and then states getting together with tribes and saying give us a piece of the action for our budget. This just wouldn't have, wouldn't have happened. Um, but it's, a, it's a, a game where people were playing zero-sum politics and it just led to this. Uh, it just became a bigger and bigger game. and. Uh, I'll tell you what, Nevada's resolved it. Nevada feared it. Nevada was the opposition to most of it, or at all stages. There were also the State Attorney General's Association, national. Um, but Nevada's now saying, we'll play ball. We'll run your casinos for you. We'll take 30%. Not only will we run your casinos for you, we'll help market Nevada in the process. Let me just give you a little side what the Nevada uh, gaming companies are doing in California is the same as the Nevada gaming companies going to Detroit. Uh, they run the casinos in Detroit, MGM, Mandalay. There is a third group actually that's run by one of the Indian tribes in Michigan. Uh, but uh, the MGM, of course, has the biggest hotel in the world, 5,000 rooms casino in Las Vegas. And they have the biggest casino in Detroit. You go into the Detroit casino and you go up the escalator from the parking lot up to the casino and there's a big mural on the wall of the MGM Grand in Las Vegas. Now what are they doing in Detroit? Let me tell you another thing. Go into the MGM in Las Vegas, you will not see a picture of Detroit. <laughs>